Okay, so where were we on here? Let's see. Oh, here's one. Okay. Okay. There's just really not much to say about it. I mean, it's pretty black and white. Mm. Yes. Okay. Everybody ready? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Can I call the meeting to order, order please? Notice of Adequate notice of this meeting was given in accordance with the Open Public Meeting Act by mailing the schedule of the Township Committee to the Express Times and North Star Ledger newspaper, posting a copy on the Township Bulletin Board, and filing a copy of the Township Board. Call Paul Kenya. Here. Dean. Here. Spencer. Here. I said it was absent. Varsity. Here. All the rest of the class, please. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. Okay. Motion to open public comment. I'll make that motion. Second. Aye. 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 Uh, at this time, we invite members of the public to come up to the podium, state your name and address, and uh, make your comments. speak to the board this evening to make you aware of a problem that is fast becoming what I feel is a public nuisance in our community. I am hoping for direction from you as to how to address the enforcement of our local and state laws and ordinances because something is needed very much right now. Uh, These problems have been created as a result of actions and inactions taken by January Pet Resort, which is located at 470 Route 173. My property abuts the south border of the January property. There are three major issues that exist, and I hope that this board will take action to address them or give me direction to the appropriate enforcement agencies that are available to me as well as the citizens of our community. First of all, we are faced with a major noise problem generated by excessive dog barking. This problem has increased steadily over the last couple of years. Actually, it coincides with the passage of a variance that our township granted to January Pet Resort in 2013. It allowed, among other things, 60 dogs on the January property. The best way I can describe the noise is in the winter it's bad, uh, in the spring and the fall it's horrible, and in the summer it's unbearable. From 6.30 in the morning till 7.30 at night we've been inundated with this noise. <clears throat> we we ex- we tried to reach out. Um, going back to this past summer on the 4th of July weekend, the noise was so bad at 7.30 in the morning, 8 o'clock in the morning, neighbors were outside of their homes in in Bradford Lane. I called the police. Um, I was actually with one of my uh, neighbors. My next door neighbor was a retired chief of police, Mr. Hager. He said he didn't think it was going to be the police's responsibility to address this, and he was correct. Uh, They did call me back. They said it wasn't within their realm, that that noise enforcement issue uh, concerning dogs should be done through the animal control officer. Another one of our neighbors called. It was a Sunday morning, so there was no one there. Uh, Ms. Marin, one of our neighbors, called on Tuesday. The animal control officer told her that uh, that wasn't in her uh, jurisdiction, in that it was a business and not a residence. And she advised us to contact the township, the zoning office, or the Department of Health. I contacted the zoning officers in Loretto. He was very sympathetic, but it was not in his realm to address sound issues called the Board of Health, they said call the police. So I'm here, welcome to you. We've gone around the whole circle. There are ordinances in our township that entitle us to peace and quiet. Entitles us to enjoy our properties. There are state laws that actually supersede our own local laws that our township must abide by. The state has certain ways of identifying noise. 
A yawning noise is not something that can be measured. That morning on July the 4th, or that weekend of the July 4th, there was no way to measure with a machine of any sort with 75 doors blocking near your house would sound like. But the state does use something called a decibel measurement. And they have a certain restriction that applies to the state in its entirety. And that is that at your property at your property line, you cannot exceed a noise level of what's called 65 decibels. And measurement of this is done by very sophisticated instrumentation. At a recent uh, hearing at our township and the land use board, uh, this issue was addressed. I'm not going to address a variance that's being requested by Jan right now. It's outside of that realm. But there were experts that the board did accept, sound experts, experts provided by Jan Ray, as well as objectives in the case that was at hand. Both noise experts, including Jan Ray's, agreed on this. Noise is a health issue. And that is a fact that's, that's held up throughout the United States government feels the same way. The World Health Organization, there have been many, many studies that's never been in dispute. Noise is an issue, not just the level of the noise, but also the health effect it has on people, whether it be on blood pressure or on sleep uh, deprivation. There are a lot of issues with health that are involved with excessive noise. But the sophisticated machinery that the January expert used measured according to state law that the state considers a violation of state law. The January expert's own testimony and his own measurements indicated that January was violating the law by having sound levels at the property line above the state mandated 65 decibels. My question is this, where is the enforcement? Is it necessary for the community to go to the state to resolve this? since it is a state issue, or is it because there are local ordinances addressing the sound issue, should this be something that's presented to you and addressed and the enforcement issue addressed at a local level here? It's not just even the dogs barking. The house, the house next door to me has a dumpster that's on the January property behind it, but I'm very close to it also. I believe that there is an ordinance or there's a there's a law somewhere, I've seen it, but I'm not sure, and the board may know, that a business is not allowed to have these trucks come in and empty these dumpsters in the, dumpsters in the middle of the night. 4.30 in the morning, 5 o'clock in the morning, I can hear this truck come in. It's one of those trucks with that big lifting on it. It lifts up one of those gigantic containers and slams it into the truck and then drops the thing back on the ground on a gravel driveway. The best way I can describe this it looks like a hand grenade. It's like a... It's like a, a big explosive, like a firework thing going off in this gigantic loud boom that wakes you up. I don't think that's supposed to be allowed in this township. It's something that maybe the board would address if there is such a, a ruling on it. There's something else that's very pressing too, and it's not to do with the sound. On the January property, there is a large container. It's right up against the property line of my property and the property next door to me. It's similar to one of those cargo containers that you see on the ships. It's about 12 feet wide, about 12 feet high, maybe 40 feet long. It's big gray. It looks like the thing that you would use to transport goods overseas. Jan Ray testified at the land use board meeting. They used that for storage. And it was testified to that there's electricity in one form or another running into that building. There, and it's not a building, it's a big metal storage tank. <coughs> There's been no permits of a file for electricity running into that. And I have a major concern about that. I have grandchildren that come to my property, my wife is out there, my dog, myself, we do gardening work outside. I don't know what the issue is with electricity. I mean, you put electricity, metal, and water together, <coughs> and you're looking at electrocution. So those things all together pose a serious threat. And I would hope that the board enforce the issue, not just of the setback, because there's a setback requirement of 20 feet. This large container sits right on the property line, maybe two feet away. So that should be addressed. It should be moved off the property line and adhere to the proper setback conditions. But more importantly to me right now, especially with this wet weather and snow, that somehow this electricity, the electricity issue is addressed. When the variance was granted to January in 2013, there were certain restrictions and they were allowed to do certain things. They were allowed to have no more than 60 dogs on the property at any one time. That was a variance that this township granted them. They have not adhered to that. 
this is testified to. They've had, they've had advertisements where they show they are going way beyond what they're entitled to. They were allowed to have 32 kennels. They've advertised they have 58. Um, the Board of Health, the Warren County Department of Health, the spot checks there, they come there and they and their records show, this has been through the evidence in the, on the land use board, as well as the public record, that January has been cited about seven times ever since they had that variance for having too many kennels and too many doors, 50, 60, 70, 80. So maybe not 80, but 75, I think, was the highest number. Well, above and beyond what they're required to have, allowed to have. So they also are allowed only to have doors. This is a condition of a variance that our township granted them. They advertise. They, they testify in court. They have other things in doors there. They advertise. They have snakes, reptiles, uh, rodents, birds, cats. They're completely sidestepping the law. They're completely ignoring the restrictions on the variance that this board granted them. And I would hope that there's some sort of way that this board will see that the enforcement issues are addressed concerning this property. Okay, thank you. Before we say anything, and I think I need an opinion from you, January currently right now is before the land use board. So I don't know the appropriateness for us to address anything. To no, the not that I'm trying to stonewall you, but uh, I'm sure there's overlapping issues in what he's mentioned, and I don't I don't want to put the township in a precarious situation here. There actually, there are uh, uh, noise ordinances, and including <coughs> the trash container one. Um, it takes a lot to find them, you know. Okay, no, it, it, it's a challenge. I've well, been down that road. We have to look at maybe, yeah, I was say, maybe you can look into it, Let's contact Jonathan's road for the land use board, see what you can separate, what we can't address, what we can't address so at this point. Yeah. Well, a lot of his problems are going to be addressed with the land use board. Some of them aren't, okay. uh, you know, and one of which is they were granted a variance and there was really no community opposition to it in 2012. Um, and I certainly understand you are trying to enforce the dog issue. That's another conversation that we're going to have as a group up here, which I all told you when I was on the land use board that I'd be looking into code and zoning enforcement. Uh, um, it's not it's not a short-term fix right now um, but I, I am well aware of it and I'm <laughs> taking steps and we'll be talking to this group with it but a lot of this is going to end up getting solved in the land use board first and then some of the spillage will come back to this table but in the meantime I'm well aware of what it is I'll be working on it because I know that they're not coming back till March so I understand. That's why I did not address anything yeah. that has to do with the variance or with the land use board's uh, action on the, uh, on the pending uh, application or anything that would be affected by the pending application. I'm addressing the situation that exists now, particularly the metal container, which has nothing to do with the variance, the electricity running to it. I think that that's stands by itself alone, nothing to do at all with the Testimony board regarding it? Absolutely. So let, let's let us, the township attorney talk with the land use board attorney. We'll figure out what we can address for you now, what we can't, and we'll try to get some answers for you. And as I say, the noise requirement, too, that it's been brought up, and uh, as far as the noise issue, as far as the state is concerned, that is a, a standing thing that goes to the state. So. What I'm really asking for is where do we go for enforcement? That's what we really need back. Well, that's what we're finding out in these answers for you, okay? Thanks a lot. Thanks for coming. Anyone else? He's a spokesman for everybody. <laughs> okay. So that's it. Nobody else wants to come forward? Motion to close public comment? Maybe motion. Second. Okay. All right. Approval of minutes. Everybody have a chance to review the December 15 minutes? Mm -hmm. If so, we have a motion to approve. Me motion. Second. Discussion? Roll call? Yes. I have to abstain because I wasn't a member of the board at the time. Yes. Yes. Uh, motion to approve the January 3rd meeting uh, minutes. Motion. Second. 
Discussion? Roll call? Yes. 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 Okay. Next we have approval of resolutions. First one, the 2017-34 resolution authorizing redemption of tax liens. Resolution 2017-35 resolution authorizing refund of tax overpayment. Uh, have a motion to approve those two resolutions. I'll make it. Yeah. Discussion. Roll call. Yes. 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 Two resolutions we just got from the engineer today. First one's 2017-36 approval to submit the grant uh, for uh, repairs to Dumont Road and one for Washington Street. Uh, motion to adopt those two resolutions. I'll make it. Second. Discussion? Roll call. Kenya. Yes. Dean. Yes. Spencer. Yes. Arson. Yes. Make a motion to approve the monthly police report as submitted. You make it? Yeah, I'll make it. Uh, second. Uh, discussion? Roll call? Yes. 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 Will, you're up. Uh, make a motion to approve the uh, DPW monthly report. You don't have any questions? <coughs> second that motion. Discussion? Roll call? Yes. 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 You done? Yeah. Well, uh, I'll make a motion to accept the municipal court report under tab four. Second. Anybody? I second. second. Mm -hmm. Discussion? Roll call? Kenya? Yes. 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 He couldn't make it today, I guess. How's he doing? Anybody in here? <laughs> yeah. He had minor surgery. Just. Uh, the only thing you just hands. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but we can understand them. Yeah. <laughs> okay. We need a motion to go into executive session. Uh, to discuss contract negotiations with the PBA, uh, personnel matters regarding the animal control and zoning. We need a motion. Second. Discussion? Roll call? Kenya? Yes. Dean? Yes. Spencer? Yes. Carson? Yes. The public administration. I know, I know. You need a door opener? Yeah, you can open the door. If I was like 25 years younger? Uh, maybe. Yes. Okay. <laughs> I still think that we would uh, uh, nine inspector go over. 19. I'll speak to Pat Dottie tomorrow. Okay. okay. He's, He's not the electrical inspector. Right. He's the state inspector. Who's the state inspector? That's a heavy. Mm -hmm. With the ground being on it? Mm -hmm. It's been like that for a long time. Yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Make it, uh, need a motion to come out of executive session? Need a motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. This committee was in executive session for approximately 25 minutes. The topics of discussion were uh, contract negotiations regarding the PBA contract, personnel regarding the animal control officer, the zoning officer, and the issuance of rights notices. Uh, executive session meeting minutes will be available at such time as the need for confidentiality no longer exists. We have some motions from the executive. Uh, Paul, you want to hear one? Uh, I'd like to make a motion to hire Larry Krebling as a temporary zoning officer on a month-to-month -month basis. I'll second. Discussion? 
Roll call. Yes. 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 Larry. Yes. Do we have a motion? Yes, I want to make a motion to authorize the attorney to issue the rice notices as discussed in the executive session. Uh, and we'll, at our next township meeting, which we'll, we'll make that motion. So that's the motion. Second. Anybody second? Same. Discussion? Roll call? Yes. 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 And I'd like to make a motion for uh, a special meeting either January 24th or January 26th based on the availability of our township attorneys. 24th to 26th. 24th to 26th. I'll second that. At 7 p.m. 7 p.m. Roll call. Yes. 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 Okay. Uh, motion to open up public comment. Oh. Amanda. Well, Amanda. Oh, oh, one more. Okay, I'm sorry. Uh, I'd like to make the motion to um, move adopt the resolution. Appoint um, Amanda uh, Wojcik uh, as our animal control officer for 2017. A second. Discussion? Roll call. Yes. 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 Motion to open public comment. Same motion. Second. All favor? Aye. Aye. Same rules as first time. Anybody would like to come up and speak? Sherry Needlelot, 26 Mike Hawk Lane. Um, Gentlemen, I will receive a rice notice on Saturday in the mail, via certified mail and regular mail. I had to spend my weekend trying to get to an attorney's office on Monday to deliver a request to have it held in public session. I arrived here tonight only to find that my name was on the agenda earlier has such, uh, been removed. Um, I would like some direction from the committee uh, as to who it is I'm supposed to, to direct my questions to. I go to my supervisor and I get the hands in the mirror, not sure to talk to the committee. I go to the committee, I don't get any answers. So who is it that I should direct my questions to when I have them? Because I'm not getting answers and I feel I've been stonewalled in both directions. So I, outside of my attorney's in this, I'm not getting anybody to talk to. So. Did you try to contact your liaison as of this year? I have those get forwarded on to Kathleen, mm -hmm. who uh, is my supervisor. And uh, communication is not always brought down to my level, um, unless it is first sent to Bill. Um, one of those examples would be the time card system. Uh, understand that you had a meeting, it was voted on in that meeting, that I was to punch a time card. I was never told to punch a time card until I received notification from Bill Cameron in a text message. Um, at which time it's, oh, I thought you knew. No, I didn't. Uh, I received an email today at 1230 regarding some situations in the tax department, which I was never notified about um, prior to today. Uh, and I understand those issues have been going on prior to today. So um, I, I'm trying to figure out what the holdup is with communication and why it's difficult for people to pick up the telephone and call and I called in the department last tonight to have committee men. Spencer told me that uh, I've been postponed for tonight's meeting. I got no... You didn't get an email or anything? I haven't got anything sent to me via text message, phone call, nothing. Um, and here I sit. Uh, I think you got an email from the... Maybe not an email at work, but it's not at home. email address we have, and that's the email you've answered before, so that's where we have to send it. Okay. But the I work 9 to 1 for your office. So how was I to know that I'm postponed? Do you see my point? Mm -hmm. They could have postponed it. And the purpose of a rights notice is merely to tell you if they're going to discuss your job performance. If they don't discuss it, they don't discuss it. They're allowed to make their agenda and do it. I understand that. So they tried to give you notice so you didn't have to come. Um, Common courtesy, though, would have been to pick up the telephone from my supervisor, at least to say, hey, um, I understand she was here in the building earlier tonight. So... She had to have known about it for the call. I don't think your supervisor knew anything about it. Okay. Mm -hmm. So do you understand my problem? I just want to know who am I supposed to direct my questions to? Bill, Kathleen, who, who is that? Um, Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
911? You could call the police and at least document that you called and made that complaint. Well, and do it on the non-emergency number, the 454-1010, and just get some documentation. Thank you. You won't be bothered. Okay. <laughs> Anyone else? Are you down a number in, for the municipal building or, or personal number or? I will, it's on my, uh, animal, <coughs> the animal component is on my phone. Okay. I'm uh, on the phone. I'll work on the phone. Let me tell you. I think we should change that to the police number and then we should call communications and contact and have it called back. That's what they're supposed to do. Yeah. So the police have actually told me to call on them. Right. Yeah. You know what? Well, we should change it if that's on the website, if that's what's on there. You should really just call the police number and the communication center will contact her to get back to you. And then everything's documented for that as well. And then if you come in, we at least have documentation to pull up that you never got a call back. I called the police. They've actually told me to call out of animal control. This is the number. We'll talk to Hummer about addressing that. So what, what's the number? It's the Asian Communication Center staff will refer him to the my concern is uh, I have seen dogs in the neighborhood that were loose, mm -hmm. um, running around in traffic. Uh, I just get concerned for the safety of the dog. The number I have is 916 Right, yeah, and that, that's her phone number, and, and um, well, you know, it, it's a part time position. So, you know, it, Hopefully she can get back in a timely manner. We discussed everything about some, some different factors. We're going to try to change with it. So, you know, just keep trying to call if you can. And if it's a problem with an animal and you can't get a hold of her, call the police again. At a minimum, the number should be identified. It should not be an anonymous person. Just call I'll address that with her. If you call the number, all you get is it, it rings and it says this is a voicemail or your, your call has been forwarded to this voicemail. Okay. okay, I'll just leave. And the second question I have is, uh, you mentioned we have a, is it a new zoning officer or a, a self-knowledge officer? We, we currently have a personnel issue going on with the gentleman who was sick, so. Yeah, he's had a health issue, and so we're going to use somebody else temporarily. Um, the reason I bring it up again is as a member of the township, a few times I've tried to utilize his service. <coughs> Apparently, he's, he's only paid two hours a week. Mm -hmm. um, and two hours a week that really doesn't serve uh, uh, at any function at all. The town's to be medical and not work at all. So, I mean, I would, I mean, from my perspective, you might want to increase the hours or just do away with the issue. But two hours for my, for, for my position as a user. Um, it's, it's just a waste of, of uh, time. I'll, I'll address it. Sure. Dave is very busy for those two hours, you know, with things, which doesn't give him the freedom to get out and and look. Uh, um, and it, it, it really has to be pushed. We are currently in the process of talking about addressing that. Um, again, not a quick fix, um, but hopefully in a short period of time, uh, we'll be able to have somebody in the field to follow code enforcement <coughs> and zoning enforcement. The few, the few dealings I've had with him, he's very good. Absolutely. But, but he just had a huge limitation. <coughs> he has a big limitation. You're absolutely right. But we're trying to address that. You're going to bring it up during the budget process, I think, right? Absolutely. Yes. Okay. Anybody else? Everybody 
say prayer for me. Anyone else? Thank you, Mr. Close Public Secretary. Second. 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 Aye. 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 Okay, one question. Uh, the phone that Amanda uses, is that one of the we oh, that's her personal. So it's not a township phone. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, we got a direct to that. Get that tight enough. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'll give her a call for more. Directly, want to see her, want her to something off her voicemail to identify herself or change the website. Well, well, if they're going to refer to her, right? I guess. Uh, well, I, mean, guess, um, I guess we wanted to return her voice <laughs> <laughs> is what we're basically saying. <laughs> but it should say Amanda Wojcik, uh, animal control officer. Yeah, an identification. Right. I'll, I'll, I'll talk to her about He's going to her handle it. I'll handle it. Make sure in that monthly report we see missed calls. <laughs> you know, yep. Or, you know, yes, he can come in and say, hey, you know, in February. Nope, she's documented um, every single thing she's going to be doing right now. That's going to be there. Motion to adjourn. Any motion? Second. Aye. Aye. Aye.